Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And there's two types of darkness. There's a, a lack of light, visible spectrum of light. And then there is spiritual light. And in James chapter 1, which, if you ask me, everybody should read the book of James. In chapter 1, and verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, if you lack godly wisdom, let him ask of God. Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord for understanding, people. If any of you lack understanding, uh, wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways double-minded one foot in the world one foot in the spiritual realm uh, i think that was what the lord was referring to when he was talking about people that were lukewarm but hey that's just my opinion uh there's another thing too deuteronomy 4 29 but if thou from thence Thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him. You look for the Lord, you'll find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Deuteronomy eleven thirteen, And it shall come to pass... If ye shall dilig uh, hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Joshua 22, 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 13, 3. Thou shalt, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. And they're talking about false prophets and false dreamers. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And they're talking about false prophets telling you to do things that are opposite of what the people of the Lord and of the Bible said. You know, if the Lord said, well, don't bow down to idols, and then somebody comes along and says, well, I'm a prophet of the Lord, and I changed... And I, I want you guys to worship this idol of stone or wood or whatever, or the golden calf, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, like Wall Street, they got the uh, the bull. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a golden calf, but uh, yeah. Psalms twenty two twenty six. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. So, do you get the idea? When you look for the Lord and you want understanding, you'll get it. Now, we I just did Judges chapter 1. Oh, before we do that, let's take a look at something let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20 
And we'll start in verse 16, because I, I don't want to, you know, if you've bothered to read Genesis or, you know, the rest of the Old Testament, the Lord didn't particularly care for the Canaanites. I mean, seriously. Deuteronomy 2016, but of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance. All right. So these people built cities. They built, uh, they planted vineyards, they planted fruit trees, gardens. Okay. And God's telling them, go into the land and take it, take it from them. They're my enemies. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. You know, when you hear people say, well, you know, God loves everybody. When you hear that garbage, run away. Because... Either they're idiots and morons that have no business teaching the Bible. And that's that's if that's if that's the good part. Or they're deceivers that work for the enemy. Yeah, the church has an enemy. God has an enemy. And they actually call the enemy the chosen ones. But of the cities of this people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them. But Chaplain Bob, God told us to love our enemies. Yeah, love your enemies. Don't love God's enemies. You want to love God's enemies? You want to love the devil? You go for it. I'm going to pass on that. Matter of fact, there's uh, people out there that claim to believe the Bible, and they'll tell you that there is no devil. Yeah. There's people out there that say, well, there's no devil. And I had somebody just recently tell me that, uh, well, they wrote me an email. Somebody had been on my channel a few times, a number of times. They said, God is the devil. Because the word devil means adversary. And when Israel was into gross sin, God was against them. He was their adversary. So basically the same root word. So they say, well, huh, God's the devil. Really? And the Bible says that a heretic, after the first or second admonition, reject. I will write somebody twice. And after that, let the Lord blind them. You know, when people uh, dishonor the Lord, he, he, he can and will blind them to the truth. He can and will and sometimes does blind people to the truth. Like the Mormons. They teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Can you imagine that? Jesus is Satan's brother. They got Satan's brother as their savior. Is that dishonoring Jesus of the Bible? Guess what? My Bible says that Jesus created the heavens and the earth. My Bible teaches me that Satan was created by Jesus. But the Mormons teach that uh, Jesus' father went in and did marry. And I guess he, I don't know. I don't even like to think about this stuff. But that's, that's they actually teach this. So, you know, God blinds them. And they deserve it. But Israel was told 
go into the land. Deuteronomy 20, 17, but thou shalt utterly destroy them. But Chaplain Bob, we're supposed to love everybody. Uh... I guess you got a different God than I do. I don't know. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites. Who did, who did Esau marry? He married two Hittite women. Oh, yeah. Two of them. Two of them. And you wonder why God hated Esau. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Parasites, I mean Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that they should teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. If you leave them alone, they're going to teach you to do what they do with their gods. The devils, the fallen ones, you know, the ones that were booted out of heaven. Yeah, you could read about them in... I think it's Revelation 12. Destroy them. Well, guess what? In Judges chapter 1, what did, they, what did it say? They went into the land, and not all the tribes drove them out. And what it means they, uh, you know, when it says to drive them out of the land, it's talking about killing as many as you can until the others decide, uh, hey, wait a minute, everybody, that's we're, we're a bunch of Canaanites and we're living here and they're killing all, all our people. Maybe it's a good idea we leave. What do you say? You know, drive them out. That doesn't mean you buy them a Greyhound bus ticket and, you know, let them leave. No. No, you, you know, utterly destroy them. And if you don't, they're going to teach you to do all their abominations. And then the Lord's going to become an adversary against you. Uh, you want to worship the devil? Well, then I'm going to be your enemy, Israel. And, you know, so they had a choice. So in James, I'm sorry, Judges chapter 1, they're already starting to be disobedient. So, let's go to Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2, verse 1. And an angel of the Lord... Now, I did an entire Bible study on the angel of the Lord. Um, sometimes the angel of the Lord is an actual angel, which basically means messenger but other times the angel of the lord talks in the first person in god's stead for god as god and uh i think if i remember correctly i think that was when moses was talking to the angel of the lord in the burning bush i think think i'd have to look it up it's been years since i've done that that bible study but sometimes the angel of the lord is talking in the first person like thus saith the lord and some bible scholars that i respect greatly believe that the angel of the lord was christ before he was in a human body Makes for an interesting study, if you're interested. You know. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go. 
I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. What's a league? An agreement. You know, a covenant. A contract. You know, don't don't make any don't make any promises. Ye shall make no league. You ever heard of the League of Nations? Uh, it was before the United Nations. You know, all the nations getting together. All the heathen nations with the with the West. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. You haven't listened to me. I've been telling you, but you haven't been listening. Why have ye done this? But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? I told you people, go into the land, kill them all, throw down their altars, destroy everything. But you didn't listen. Why? Well, that's the Bob translation. Verse 3. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides and their gods the devils and their gods shall be a snare unto you what's a snare you ever heard of a snare it's a trap it's a type of trap you know they use snares to hunt birds or catch birds or rabbits or other animals it's a trap. You think you're getting free, you know, you get an animal like, uh, I don't know, uh, a, let's say a bird. And it thinks it's going to get a free meal because there's some food. But it doesn't notice the, uh, the rope around the food. And then it walks up and then it hits the trip. And then the snare grabs it. The rope tightens around its body. And it can't get away. You thought you were getting free food, and now you got a you're in a trap, a snare. But they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Yeah. They saw, some of them had seen all the miracles in Egypt. They saw the water out of the rock. How in the world do you carry a rock around in the desert that's producing water to, to, for hundreds of thousands of people? I mean, <laughs> you know... You know, it's like when, when, when Jesus had the 5,000 men and plus women and children. And he took a few loaves, a couple of loaves of bread and fed them all. I mean, really? Really? You know? And they had seen all these things. who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. 
and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnathherez, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill, Gaish, Gash, and also all that generation which were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Yep. All the old people that had seen all the works of the Lord, they'd all died. And now we had a bunch of kids. And they were like, oh, yeah, I heard those fairy tales. You know, God took them through the desert and their shoes never wore out in 40 years. Boy, that, you know, and all and water and how he parted the Red Sea. And, eh, you know, eh, who believes that stuff, right? Verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam is just a generic word that means Lord. But it had become so associated with Satanism that there came a time when the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. Yeah. In the book of Hosea, chapter 2 and verse 16, And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baali. B-A-A-L. So in verse 11, it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. They served the devil. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods. And of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Who is Ashtaroth? Huh, let's take a look. If memory serves me correctly, Ashtaroth is the queen of heaven. She's the goddess. Uh, she has many names. I believe it uh, Easter is one of her names. Yeah. Yeah, the Queen of Heaven. So, they served the devil. They forsook the Lord and they served the devil and the Queen of Heaven. Verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. You ever had food in the refrigerator that spoiled? It's no good. What do you do? You get rid of it. You throw it away, right? And he sold them into the hands of their enemies. What? Israel has enemies? But, 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 but I've... I heard God loves everybody. Yeah, Israel has enemies. And if you think that little bunch of antichrists over in the Middle East are who we're talking about, well, you're confused. Very confused. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies roundabout so that they could no longer stand before their enemies well if you can't stand before your enemies what happens you fall you fall down dead verse 15 whithersoever they went out the hand of the lord was against them for evil as the lord had said and as the lord had sworn unto them and they were greatly distressed 
Hey, yo. Uh, can we um uh, how, do we, can we take this verse and make a modern application? W what do you think? Are is the Lord's hands against His people? Are the enemies against us? Uh, you, what do you, I don't know. Verse sixteen. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. Who are judges? Well, just like in a court of law, you get two people that have a, uh, a fight and the judge will do the work of the Lord and decide who is right and who is wrong, but will also lead the people and tell them the right way. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken, they wouldn't listen, and yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a-whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. No, they didn't follow the commandments of the Lord. Sounds a lot like today's headlines. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Hmm. Now you gotta, I, I'm gonna interject something here. When the Lord repents, it means he changes his mind. It's like in the book of Jonah. God sent Jonah to Nineveh, the Assyrians, a very wicked and cruel people. He says, in 30 days, I'm going to destroy the city. That's the Bob paraphrase. But the people repented and they put on sackcloth and ashes and they had a fast and they prayed. And the Lord repented of destroying the city. A sinless God does not need to repent of sin. He repents of his intentions. Us, who are sinful creatures, we need to repent of sin. And there's actually people claiming to be preachers and pastors that try to tell you that our repenting and God's repenting means the same thing. It doesn't. Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. What are we repenting of? Our wickedness, our sin. God doesn't have sin. I mean, I mean, these are basic, basic, basic doctrines. You know, I'm not no Bible scholar. I would have just been an average Joe a couple hundred years ago. You know? It sickens me. They want you to think that our repenting and God's repenting is the same thing. God changes his mind when we change our mind. We have to turn from our sin and wickedness. Verse 19. And it came to pass when the judge was dead... See, when the judge is alive and telling everybody, hey, look, guys, God's not happy with you people. Mend your ways. Follow the right path. Give up your wickedness. Repent. They did it. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them. And to bow down unto them, they cease not from their own doings, 
nor from their stubborn way. Oh, boy. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, the Lord speaking here, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. I'm going to leave your enemies in the land. Verse 22, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. You going to serve the Lord? Or are you going to serve the devil? Good question. In the book of Joshua, which is the book before Judges, chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua said, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hmm. Who are you going to serve? You know, people think the... Uh, you know, the book of Revelation, people are going to have a choice. They can serve the beast and take his mark, or they can serve the Lord. It might cost them their lives. Some of us will have to pay, show our faith with our lives. Boy, tell that to the pre-trib rapture Baptists. Uh-uh. Oh, no, we're the bride of Christ. God would never do that. Well, guess what book I just ordered? Now, I've, ordered, I've, owned, I've owned this book before. Um, I've had quite a pastor's library in the past. I've lost all my books uh three times that i can think of offhand yeah it was called uh fox's book of martyrs f-o-x-e apostrophe s fox's book of martyrs about all the people that have died for their faith well i just ordered it from uh sacred truth publishing sacred truth ministries they're in um mountain city tennessee i'll tell you what He's got a lot of good books, really, old stuff. And uh, he reprints them. And he's not no spring chicken. And when he's gone, all those books are going to be um, gone. So it's always a good idea to have a few, see what was taught back in the old days. All the publishers today are uh, Zondervan, the largest printer of Bibles, so-called, in the English-speaking world, is owned by HarperCollins that prints gay porn and the Church of Satan Bible. And they, in turn, are owned by the News Corp, which most of you know as Fox Television. Yeah, the fox in the hen house. What did Jesus call Herod? You know, King Herod, that the Herod family, you know, the family that killed all the babies in Bethlehem, the, the Herod family that killed John the Baptist. Yeah, he said, tell that fox Herod. Quite appropriate if you ask me. 
You think Fox is going to uh, let one of their subsidiaries print really good books? No. And guess what book, what Bible they have the exclusive printing rights of? The NIV. Now, people will say, well, yeah, but, but they also print the King James. Well, yeah, anybody can print the King James. I can print it. In the United States, there is no copyright on the King James Bible. Anybody can print it. And anybody can print the NIV, too, but they'll be hauled into court uh, for copyright violation. But uh, <laughs> when you look at the NIV, um, it turns Jesus, the morning star, in, in Revelation 22 into the guy that fell from heaven in Isaiah 14. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, what Bible you use makes a difference, and I've he I've heard. Now I haven't looked into it, but I, you know, it's one of those things that y you just believe on faith that uh, they're changing the King James Bible. So that's why I tell people go to the used bookstore, buy the ones from the fifties if you can find them. They were probably a lot closer to you know what they are now god only knows well the devils what they've been doing for the last you know decades decades so and people will wonder why i'm so cynical i'm not cynical i'm a realist i know who the god of this world is i served him for at least half my life and I don't want to serve him anymore. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Joshua said. So, all right, well, that's going to be the end of the second chapter of the book of Judges. There will be more to come, God willing, of course. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.